I was at a business gathering and a number of business people had come together. I think it was a celebration uh, of some kind. I don't recall what the exact event was, but I do remember that someone came to my office, picked me up, and in the car was another business person, a prominent business person in New York, and we went to the event together. Now, I didn't know this prominent business person uh, personally, but I got to know him, and he was a, a fellow who had done great things uh, in the advertising world, in fact. He ran a major advertising agency that had uh, broke tremendous ground, uh, and uh, we were going to this event together. When we were at the event, uh, the people were interacting with one another, and one of the people that was at the event was a major advertiser. And this advertiser, uh, uh, the person representing this advertiser was there. And one of the things that I heard her say uh, while we were there was, you know, my company has no idea how successful this gentleman is, this, this gentleman that who was, you know, came in the car with us. And uh, I said, really? And, I, and she said, well, yeah, they have no idea what he, what he does and, and, and the successes he's had and the kind of place he runs and all that. And this fellow ran a multi-million dollar agency. He had a beautiful space. He had lots of people working for him. He had broke tremendous ground. He was a real pioneer and leader in advertising, particularly in the sector that he focused on. And I realized that the reason why they didn't, some major advertisers didn't uh, respond was because he seemed, he was an older gentleman, he, he was somewhat unassuming, and uh, they had read something into, obviously, his race. Uh, they looked at him and they said, well, uh, uh, they just assumed that he couldn't possibly uh, or, or I don't know what they thought, but the bottom line is they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. And this is uh, one of the realities, whether it's race, whether it's sex, whether it's uh, uh, whatever it is that someone is looking at you and making a judgment about, um, you're often dealing with people who don't believe you. They don't believe your capabilities. They don't believe your credentials. They don't believe, particularly in a world today where there are so many people presenting themselves in certain ways and you just don't know whether this person has any real experience, any capability, you know, you just don't know who they are and what they do. The world is pretty cynical today and, and often for good reason. Some people have been burned. So keeping that in mind, as someone who's out there marketing themselves, presenting themselves, you have to be mindful that you're dealing with an audience that often does not believe you. They don't believe you. And what you say is one thing, but whether or not it is coming across is another thing. Now, there are um, pluses and minuses to this, frankly. Uh, there are a couple of things or three things I would say you have to keep in mind as you encounter a world of disbelievers. <laughs> uh, the first thing is putting yourself in their shoes. So if you can put yourself in their shoes, you can empathize with why they might not believe you. It doesn't justify it. It doesn't condone it. But it's useful as someone who's out there to understand why they might be uh, uh, question you in some way. Now, I realize that y y you might look at this and say, well, this is uh, uh, criticism, this is judgment. In some cases, it's sexism, it's racism, it's any number of things. Yes, it's all of that. But if you can put yourself in their shoes, you will become better at presenting yourself, you'll become better at your message, you'll be, you'll be better at the way you approach the market. So you have to look at always what you're doing by putting yourself in someone's shoes. Um, uh, not long ago, I, I found a, an ID 
from one of my early jobs and I looked at this ID and I said oh my goodness look how young I looked in this ID and I realize now as someone who's much older looking at this ID that there were many people during those years that watched me listened to me and they didn't believe me that you know and so it wasn't until I was able to present the facts and the details in a certain way that they actually believe me and 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 frankly one of the experiences I had that was revealing for me was one of the early seminars I gave uh, it was not that long after this ID that I saw I was you know very young and I gave I, I, I promoted a seminar people came and as people were gathering there was a, a gentleman an older gentleman probably twice my age who came in and was asking, well, who's giving this seminar? And the, uh, the fellow I had working the table pointed at me, and he looked at me like, well, what, what is your background? And, and question. Well, that seminar, it turns out, the person had such a great time, learned so much, felt it was so valuable, that he left saying, this is the best seminar I have been to, uh, I love the way you present. I love the details you presented. I learned so much. I want you to present this to my company. And so I won him over. But I put myself in his shoes. I didn't get offended. I realized that I had to be extra focused on demonstrating the value to him. So keep that in mind. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Now, the other thing I would say in a world of uh, people not believing you is making sure that when you are selling yourself, if you will, and when you're uh, focusing on service and content and all those things, you're focused on the best results from the standpoint of what the person that you're aimed at will receive. In other words, what are the outcomes that that person wants. Focus on that. What is the transformation that that person wants and needs? Focus on that. So if you're selling a product, it's okay, you, you're really going to love wearing this beautiful bracelet. It's going to make you feel even more successful because you know it's of the finest quality. People are going to look at you and they're going to look at you differently because you're wearing this product and so forth. Think about what that person might want. So that's a, another extension of putting yourself in the shoes of the person you're dealing with. So often we, we talk on and on and on about our products or services or about our capabilities, our experience and, and, and all that, that we don't really get into what the person wants. And of course, it's good to talk about who you are, what you offer, what your brand offers and so forth. But just remember that, make sure that that is always positioned so that you're thinking in terms of the person's results, outcome, transformation. What is it that they desire? What is it they want from you? And speak their language. Don't get too caught up in trying to demonstrate to them that you belong, that you're credible, that you're, you know, all of these things. They don't believe you and and you have to cover first the by getting in their shoes and second by understanding the results and outcome and transformation that they desire now the third thing is when it comes to people who don't believe you which is going to be most people is you do have to pay attention to areas of credibility and this is where uh, reflecting and communicating your uh, your, your background, your experience, your credentials are all valuable. And so you do have to think, okay, what's the best, most credible information I can put across to help a person feel comfortable in this situation? So if you're a sales professional, it might be, you know, I work with many people who 
uh, own their own business. I work with many people who have just moved into new homes. I work with many people, and, and that makes people feel comfortable. Okay, I feel comfortable because this is a person who understands me, and also they have experience doing this. But here's the key. The key in terms of dealing with people and markets that don't believe you is making sure that what you present you believe. That is it in a nutshell. Your own uh, credibility, your own belief comes from reinforcing what you believe and working more and more uh, on what you believe so that there's a level of certainty that no one will ever question. That you are standing in those shoes period. You are in those shoes. And that takes um, uh, focus. You have to be deliberate. You have to be consistent. You have to be determined. But if you are standing in those shoes, that is the most credible thing you can do. When someone looks at you, when someone communicates with you, when someone deals with you, you are 100% uh, dedicated to what you say you are and you've got to believe it if you believe it if you will you will convey that and and people will pick up your certainty and your certainty will give them more certainty it'll give them more confidence it'll give them more reassurance and when you don't back down from who you are i'm a top sales professional i'm a top entrepreneur i'm uh, an excellent marketer i'm a great artist uh, i'm an incredible provider i'm incredible whatever it is if you don't back down from that that is going to be the most persuasive thing to get people to Come on board, be supporters, uh, to uh, buy from you, to become part of your community, to become a follower, or whatever, whatever that is. 100% <clears throat> belief in who you are. So what are those three things when they don't believe you? Number one, get into their shoes. Get into their shoes. Number two, think about the best outcome, the results, the transformation, the... Um, um, the outcome that they desire. And the third thing is, yes, beware of credibility. Make sure that you present all of those credible things that are important. But the most credible thing is your own belief in yourself and your own willingness to stand in those shoes. When you do that, you will convey a level of certainty that you'll believe and as a result, others will start believing as well. If you like this tip, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Share it with someone in your network. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.